Yes, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the MU stand. Crystal Palace won, Manchester United won. This is your match reaction. I mean, what a big, big disappointment. I cannot imagine how to tell you this. I mean, I am gutted. The fact that we conceded that last minute free kick. I mean, you can't blame David De Gea for that. I mean, it was just a stunning free kick. There is nothing we could do to stop that. It is nothing. I mean, David De Gea kept us in the game. He made a, another two, three decent saves in the game. But I'm not quite sure how Eric Ten Hag didn't see this coming. I mean, the fact that he took out Wickhorst and bring in uh, McTominay basically made us more defensive. And it allowed Crystal Palace to, to basically attack us because they're not really uh, threatened uh, to be exposed on the counter. So they basically pushed a lot of players forward and then finally it got paid off for them. And then they, they, they scored that that goal that they needed to take, a, to take a draw in this match. But I think it was a mistake. I think it was a mistake by Eric Ten Hag. Uh, one, not taking out Casemiro. By the way, we're going to have a discussion about Casemiro's uh, yellow card, which would mean that he is going to miss the game against Arsenal. It's just a double blow, guys. It's a double blow that we... we what a way to finish the game. I mean, it's just ugly, ugly. The fact that we lost Casemiro now against Arsenal and we lost two points in this match as well. So, you know how messed up that is. It's just incredible. But I'm going to quickly round down uh, through the uh, players rating here. Uh, we can quickly take a look at this. We can start off with points. This is the points that they were given based on their performance. And I'm going to let you guys know that if I agree or disagree with these. I'll start off with David De Gea. Uh, David De Gea, 6.8. Uh, I'll give him 7. I think I'll give him a 7. He, Like I said, he did have a couple of saves in this match it could have been worse it could have been worse if not for him so seven for me David De Gea uh I'll give him a seven obviously he was well beaten for that free kick goal uh Wambasaka Wambasaka was more a threat than actually Anthony in the offensive end I was just amazed how Anthony did little in this match and Wambasaka did more than him on that right hand side and let's not forget, he did tackle Zaha to deny Palace the victory at the end. I would give him 7. Yeah, 6.9, I would have to agree. Martinez. Martinez, Lissandro Martinez, his lining breaking pass was an asset again on his first uh, Premier League start in two months. Um, he was booked for a cynical tackle uh, in the second half. But all in all, I think it was a decent, decent performance by Martinez. Varan also solid game. I don't think they put us under a lot of pressure. Like Crystal Palace created a couple of chances and they, they they scored a stunning free kick. And what can you do? We should have won this game. We should have won this game. It's not one of those games you blame the the defenders. Uh, they haven't done their job. They have. They have done their jobs. So somehow they just scored a stunning free kick. And what can you do about that? There's nothing you could do about that. Even David De Gea can't save it. Uh, Luke Shaw back to the left position in this game. He he, he was good on the uh, attacking third and defensively he was also good. I think a solid solid game by Luke Shaw. Uh, Casemiro. Oh, where do I start? I mean the game itself if we want to talk about the game Casemiro did really really well in terms of performing in the game but that yellow card man that yellow card could be costly. And uh, he's going to miss the Arsenal game. He's going to miss the Arsenal game. Uh, we're going to see how the team reacts. This team fights. This team uh, doesn't give up. But we'll see how the team uh, sets up against Arsenal. But in this game, I think Casemiro was good. He should have and uh, could have scored that winning goal in the 91st minute, I think. I don't know how he missed it. It was a corner kick, I think, set up by Bruno Fernandes. He was just wide open. He missed a clear-cut chance. I think he should have scored that one. Oh, and we would have won the game. Uh, Eric said, okay. Yeah, seven. So Casemiro, seven, I would have to agree. 
uh, Ericsson 7.3, probably I would agree. He carried the ball forward. He was changed into the left-hand channel uh, and to, to actually assist uh, Bruno Fernandes' goal. He's, obviously, his vision was not always maximized by his, te by his teammates, but all in all, I think uh, he did okay. He sets up the goal for Bruno Fernandes. Anthony, needless to say, I mean, this guy, again, struggled again. I don't, I don't agree with that 6.8. I think he was below 6 or 6, maybe. I don't know what's wrong with him. Like, Anthony has just digressed a little bit now. It, was, it, it has been a, a little bit of a decline, especially after the World Cup. I know he scored a stunning goal against uh, Charlton. But besides the goal, the performance is not there. And we need him. We need him big time. We need him. We're going to need him against Arsenal. He has to get his uh, game plan and um, in, in, uh, in the right shape of mind. I mean, I think he's he's declining and Eric Ten Hag has to do something about that. Uh, quickly, quickly. Okay, let me see. Bruno Fernandes. So Bruno Fernandes, like I said, was probably man of the match for me. If not David De Gea. He, he scored a stunning, stunning goal. His touch, uh, his creativity was flawless. I think he did well in this match. And 9 out of 10 probably deserves it. He was all over the place, defensively, offensively. He did everything you need uh, from a number 10. He did more than that, in my opinion. Uh, Marcus Rashford, not the best of games. Average game for Marcus Rashford. You would expect that. I mean, Marcus Rashford was on the high for the past seven, eight games. But today wasn't his day. He had two, three opportunities. He tried to take on the player. He was a bit selfish for my liking tonight. I think he could have done better in one of those two incidents. He could have uh, dealt with the ball better. Uh, didn't make a lot of uh, in-behind runs in this match as well. So Rashford, he struggled. He struggled. Uh, it wasn't his worst performance, but I would give him an average six. Uh, Weghorst, six. Yeah, you can't blame him. I said we shouldn't start Weghorst, and I was right because he was he was a waste. The entire half, I think he was a waste. I don't know why Eric Ten Hag started Weghorst in this match because he was such a waste. I mean, he was useless. Did he get on the ball that much? I don't think so. Did he do a lot of pressing? Probably, but I don't think I don't think how I don't I don't I don't remember Wakehorse doing anything in the match. I mean, he had one chance. Uh, a cross comes in from Luke Shaw, a, a missed header. But other than that, I really don't. I don't remember Wakehorse doing anything in this game, and he was rightly taken off at seventieth minute. I don't think it should have never taken that long, to be honest, to be subbed off. But 6 out of 10 for me, we need to give him time to adapt and adjust to the system so I don't blame him. Uh, Scott McTominay, he could have been given a penalty, uh, but he wasn't given. The referee, I don't know what. I don't know if they're trying to cancel out what happened last week against Man City because it was a clear pen, uh, penalty in my, in my eyes. Somehow, it wasn't given. Uh... But other than that, I think McTominay didn't do much. Alejandro Garnacho, he passed up a good opportunity in the second half. Six out of ten for me. He didn't play a, a lot of minutes. Didn't impact the game, did he? I don't think so. Uh, Fred came on also to just give energy into the middle of the park. Uh, let's see who else came on. Uh, yeah, so I covered everybody. So I, I, I covered everybody. I want to talk about, before I finish, I want to talk about the manager. I think he gets 6 out of 10 for me. I think Eric Ten Hag, when he does wrong, we need to speak about it. I mean, we're not just going to blame the manager every time we drop points or we lose a game. But in this case, I think he managed the game incorrectly. I think he should have taken out Casemiro. I've been saying it. If you haven't watched the watch along, I was saying it. I was saying, take him off, take him off. He didn't take him off. And he cost us. Casemiro has been suspended for the Arsenal game. That's a big, big disappointment. Uh, and the other thing is, he made us negative by bringing in McTominay for 
Weghorst. You take out Weghorst, take out a striker, and you put another defensive midfielder. It just invites pressure on the team. And that's basically what happened. It invited more pressure into the team, which basically at the end ultimately cost us the two points. So Eric Ten Hag has to be criticized and has to take the blame for this draw. Even though we've given him a lot of credit so far for what he has done against the likes of City, against uh, a lot of different teams. In this game tonight, he has to take the blame in my opinion. But yeah, that is it. This is my match reaction. It's been very, very disappointing. But we move on. We move on to the Arsenal game. Hopefully we get a W against Arsenal. But thanks for watching, guys. Uh, don't forget uh, to drop a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. Also, let me know your man of the match. Who was your man of the match? Let me know in the comment section. I think uh, for me, it was Bruno Fernandes. So do let me know your, uh, your man of the match. And also, did Eric Ten Hag make the right decision by leaving Casemiro on? Leave your comments down below. But that is it, guys. Thanks for tuning in and watching. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.